This is a subject that I haven't seen much info on. Is it possible that there's a link between demonic entities and the negative parasitic beings that live in our bodies? There's some really intriguing connections that we think deserve to be explored. Many of you, even those who actually like this channel, will likely be dismissive of this information or label this as pseudoscience. The truly curious and ambitious, though, will undoubtedly see the value in the message and personal stories shared with this presentation. When we talk about demons, what are we talking about? Evil spiritual entities? Or are they just a figment of our imagination? Well, I would say they are very real, and not only are they spiritual beings, but they can manifest into this world in many ways, and one of those ways is through parasitic organisms. Let's start with what are the common symptoms of demon possession? One, they have the power to influence your mind and to fill it with destructive thoughts. Two, they can have an influence on the dream realm, manifesting as shadow beings during sleep paralysis. Three, possession usually involves becoming sick and constantly tired. Four, your spiritual powers and ambition begin to diminish. Five, over extreme sexual desires that can never be fulfilled. Six, material and egotistical desires that end up driving the person possessed and mad. And that's just the start. I'm sure it could go on, but I want you to think about the connection between demons and the infestation of parasites in the body. Now, before I continue, I just want to say that I'm sure there are specific cases of demon possession that go into its own, you know, like the foaming from the mouth, the deep evil voices, or speaking in tongue and whatnot, but that's not what I'm talking about. While it is possible that there could be some cases where that happens, it's mostly a Hollywood dramatization in order to separate demon possession from disease. What we're about to cover is really deep, but hang on and channel that inner light. There's no reason to be afraid. I'm basically implying that we are always possessed by multiple different demons to one degree or another. This is also connected to the other video that we've made on the Nephilim and Archons, but this has more to do with our modern lifestyles and what we digest, physically and mentally. Most humans are not aware of how many parasites they really have. I'll throw myself on that boat. For most of my life growing up, I thought that was something that only happened in third world countries. Boy, was I wrong. I think most Americans share this silly way of thinking, not knowing that almost all of our eating habits result in parasitic beings finding a home in the waste that fills our body. If you eat meat, let me just let you know, you are filled with parasites. Not only are high protein diets extremely acidic, but the body doesn't know what to do with all this excess protein. And what ends up happening is our sewage system gets backed up. Also, most of us are completely enzyme deficient and there's no way that our bodies can actually digest this meat. So you know what happens? It literally stays in your body and rots. If only you knew what your colon really looked like inside. Oh, but you're vegan. You think you're an exception? Think again. Most vegans consume an extreme amount of protein in order to compensate for not eating meat. Most of them cook all of their foods. Again, enzyme deficient and top that with genetic deficiencies, we end up having issues removing toxins from our body. All of this cooked food is dead and your body has no idea what to do with all this toxicity. The only way to protect itself is by forming mucus. This mucus is what's saving your body. What tends to happen is this hardens and stays in our body for a very long time. That's the point I'm trying to drive home. If you eat three times a day, you're cooking your foods, and you're not taking extra measures to cleanse your body, then you are most likely infested with parasites, meat or no meat. Most of you are probably saying to yourself or in the comment section, well, I feel fine. I'm doing great. Yeah, okay, that's what you think. Or is that what the parasites are thinking for you? I think most of us can't imagine the amount of energy that we could have if we remove these parasites from the body. It's not just that, most people don't even realize that their thoughts are not even their own. This also explains why it's so difficult to silence the mind. It's not really that crazy to think that if there is something inside of us that wanted to thrive, like a parasite, that they could influence their host to make decisions that create a more hospitable environment for their kind. These microbial organisms absolutely have the ability to steer the thoughts, emotions, and actions of their host. Sounds an awful lot like possession to me. When you get cravings for unhealthy foods, that isn't you. It's the parasites. Fast on juices for a week and you'll see what I'm talking about. You won't be able to think straight at first, just like a drug withdrawal. 
this is your first time hearing any of this, then I would take it slow. Research real people who've succeeded with fasting. Starting a detox too fast will shock your system. And when these parasites start dying, it's gonna make you very sick. This is the key reason why some medical experts will vehemently claim that it's unhealthy. True, if done too quickly and incorrectly, it can create something akin to the Herxheimer reaction that happens when people take antibiotics, though that's never been reason enough for them to stop prescribing them. The difference is, with juice fasting, you aren't bombing your stomach and killing off every organism, good or bad. Still, it's best to take it slow as the dead organisms need time to clear out. The enzymes in bacteria and fruit will eventually take over and allow the gut to reach a state of balance. Let me just put it this way. You have beings inside of you that just sit and demand what to eat, they feast all day long, and then they poop inside of you all day and night. You still don't see the connection? Then let me make it very clear. Parasites have the ability to affect your mind. This isn't just conspiracy talk either. Do you guys remember Osmosis Jones? The bacteria were directly influencing his mind. It had access to his most personal deep memories. This is exactly the case in the real world. It's not just food either. The tendency to over masturbate is controlled by these parasites. When you release an orgasm, not only is this a huge release of spiritual etheric energy, but this ends up creating a hormonal disbalance and it also causes adrenal fatigue. The parasites can benefit from all of this because what tends to happen is your kidneys will be overworking and eventually you're not filtering out your blood so that you become more and more toxic to the point where most of your endocrine system fails to operate as it should. You might say, well, my blood tests show up fine. Yeah, I wouldn't rely on that. One of the most important functions of the body is to keep the blood alkaline. All this toxicity and waste is being removed by the lymphatic system. You will only see problems in the blood once it becomes very serious. That goes back to people thinking they're just fine. Well, we usually don't become aware of disease in our body until it manifests as a serious issue. Most people don't consider that maybe most of their tiny symptoms like tiredness, headaches, bad odor, depression, and itchiness are the first signs that something isn't right. But what do most people do? They go to the doctor and get these symptoms suppressed with what they assume will be a quick fix. These chemical medicines do not solve the issue, they just suppress it. Eventually, it will come back, and when it does, it will be a full-on disease. That's the scariest thing, is that these parasites will give you the impression that everything is okay. If you were trying to tell me this stuff a year ago, I wouldn't buy it. I'm one of those people who literally never gets sick. I'm always very positive, so I just attributed it to that, that maybe my immune system was strong, but I was wrong. I have had symptoms my whole life and I have never had the eyes and awareness to realize that it wasn't normal. I was in denial. So don't get scared. But there is a truth to this that I know many are not ready for because what this all has to do with is a complete change in how we live our lives and perceive reality. And I realize change is scary to most of us. I understand that we can't all be Buddhists and just remove ourselves from all desires. We've been born into this modern way of life not realizing that in order to coexist in this modern age, one must fall into sin to one degree or another. I know that might sound strange, but if you're on a computer, then technically you're sinning. But that's the thing, we all have to balance. We can't just completely remove ourselves from society. We can take it step by step. And maybe one day, a change will take place in this realm. And as we grow spiritually, this process will become easier and easier. This video is not a solution video, but more of a discussion. A challenge to question everything we know about every facet of life. If we can accept that we have parasites, we can start to see why this would be connected to demons. Parasites are beings of death. They thrive off of death and rotting. They too can have an influence on your dreams. Here's an example. One evening, I went to bed feeling pretty good until I woke up from a very strange dream. In the dream, there were these white spiders inside of my body coming out of my mouth. They were white fuzzy spiders. I woke up and I felt absolutely horrible. My throat hurt extremely bad. I go to look in the mirror, open my mouth, and all I could see were these white fuzzy dots on the back of my throat. I had strep, and I swear that I had no feeling of a sore throat before going to bed, so it had nothing to do with like my subconscious picking up small details or something. No, this was a dream about parasites in my body right before I got sick. Luckily, I recovered in one day from drinking apple cider and eating plenty of fruits. 
When I was young, I was diagnosed with ADD and then schizophrenia, though my mother debated it with the doctor until the schizophrenia was downgraded to tinnitus. So they put me on Ritalin, but it didn't help. I suffered from visual hallucinations in school, making it impossible to concentrate. The doctors and specialists admitted that they didn't know what the root of the problem was or how to fix it. I was only instructed to go purchase expensive pills that caused ulcers in my stomach, which they then prescribed even more medicine for. It was a vicious cycle. On top of it all, I was always hearing these nasty voices in my head. It sounded like static from a radio or manifested in my own voice, telling me that I was worthless and life was pointless, so why not just do whatever? I think a common misconception is that freedom of being an adult is getting to drink booze and eat as much pizza and ice cream as you want, but I have to disagree. Those are drugs pushed on us as kids, and when we become adults, we think that we're choosing to eat those things, but all that's really happening is we're becoming slaves to our cravings. Much like a thrall is a slave to a demon. It's exactly like drug addiction. It's called the Food and Drug Administration for a reason. Why would food and drugs be lumped together if they didn't serve the same purpose? Alcohol is even called spirits. When someone has an addiction problem, they call it demons. It's also common knowledge that addiction is a disease. Though if addiction is a disease, as well as a demon, then what makes any other disease not a form of demon? Typically, parasites are these long, worm-like things or fibrous beings that inhabit our guts, and they resemble antennae or fiber optics. Begs the question, if parasites can influence our thoughts, and they can influence our dreams, and they can influence our desires, then could it be possible that parasites are antenna for demonic entities to manifest in the body? Para, prefix. A prefix with many meanings, including alongside of, beside, near, resembling, beyond, apart from, and abnormal. Site, an area of ground in which a town, building, or monument is constructed. So if we imagine our bodies as temples, this word begins to make a lot of sense. Something that is inside your body that shouldn't be. Almost all religions attribute worms and parasites as being evil or the work of Satan. Is it influenza? Or is it the influence of demonic entities? The word influenza even sounds like influence, so what do people say when you sneeze? They bless you. Why would they do that? The average answer, of course, is that people in the olden days were just dumb Christian zealots who attributed everything to Jesus and blessings because the general idea is that they were stupider in the past. However, I expect that the perpetuation of that idea is to cause confusion and mistrust in all things spiritual. Even schizophrenia, where many people see and hear evil voices from all around, could be caused by a disharmony of the body and an infestation of parasites. From Science Daily, quote, Recent studies have found evidence of worrisome impacts, including an association with schizophrenia because of the parasite T. Gandhi is found in the brain as well in the muscles. In addition, field and laboratory studies in mice, rats, and people have shown that infection with T. Gandhi triggers change in behavior and personality. Here's a study that goes over this same exact thing. A growing body of evidence suggests a correlation between schizophrenia and exposure to infectious agents. The majority of studied cases concerns the infection caused by T. Gandhi, an obligatory intracellular parasite that infects about one-third of the entire human population, according to the available data. Quote, Numerous epidemiological case control studies show a higher prevalence of T. Gandhi infestation in individuals with various psychiatric and behavior disorders, including schizophrenia. A lot of these studies are just focusing on one parasite alone, but really, they have no clue what's actually going on in the body. That's another thing I've always accepted growing up that the medical establishment actually knows what they're doing. I have no idea why we think this. Doctors do not heal anyone. Allopathic medicine fails at solving any issues, and most of the time, it just makes it worse. Again, why do we assume that these people actually know what these chemicals are doing in our body? I'm sure they understand it from a very boxed-in perspective, but they have no idea how it affects our body as a whole. The parasites love antibacterials. It doesn't kill them all, by the way. It just completely destroys your gut flora and kills all the good bacteria. You have parasites in your brain, in your heart, and when you take these medications, it destroys what you have left of good bacteria, just making it easier for the parasites to thrive. The only way to get rid of them 
is through awareness and diet. But this video is not about that in time. For the most part, the goal of this video is to connect two different subjects that normally aren't associated with each other. For many, spiritual realities are very hard to understand and to experience. Most humans have completely lost a sense of feeling within their body. An animal knows when they eat something that they're not supposed to, and then they'll never eat it again. Not humans though. We just stuff ourselves all day long with mostly indigestible foods that just sit in our body and rot, while our body overworks and tires itself trying to get rid of all this waste that never ends. If this has touched you and you feel inspired to make a change, start by taking a breath. Start with silence. Start by shutting down ego. For this too is controlled by parasites. Just five minutes of relaxation can completely restart your system. We intend on continuing with health subjects, so if you're interested, please let us know what you think. Thank you for watching. May our minds be unveiled. Let go of everything you think to be true. Relax the mind and ask the question, do I truly understand what this reality is?